This is a Portuguese box compass made by Pedro Freire in 1789 in Lisbon. The thing that is really special about this particular type of compass is that it's extraordinarily rare. We really know only of about three others in the world. To me, it's more than an instrument, it's a work of art. Now, this compass, if we were to look inside and remove the, uh, uh, the dial itself, you see how very specially it was regarded by the extraordinary design effort that was placed in. And appropriately, it has four portraits inside. We have Columbus, we have Henry the Navigator, we have Vasco da Gama. Do you need to make something as elaborate as this just to navigate the seas? No, as a matter of fact, uh, it's obvious that this was not designed for seafaring purposes. This was a philosopher or a scholar's mm -hmm. compass. Mm -hmm. I agree, I think it's principal use is as an art object and what it expresses as an art object. The four continents of the world and four of the most famous European explorers who basically made the modern world a European world, one that was conquered by the Europeans. And I think it's what it represents as both a painted object and as an artistic scientific object that basically is speaking to the European discovery and worldview but something that was really more practical, something that was used in practical application on a ship would be this Arabic astrolabe. Yeah, right? and you can see immediately the dramatic difference. This has materials which would not be adversely affected by the weather. It's relatively simply made in terms of its rough cut it's got uh, a wood back uh, between the two brass panels. The engraving is meticulous from a point of view of adding information. However, mm -hmm. it, it isn't, there's nothing decorative. And on the back, where it does contain the inscription of the maker, it's virtually plain. So this is definitely a functional instrument as compared to a scholastic one. With the use of an instrument such as this uh, quadrant, one can actually measure the exact latitude of your position by measuring the height of the North Star. So one would take a site, assuming the North Star is up there, and the gravity would hold the plumb bob level when the navigator was satisfied that he had located the proper angle, he would clamp the string to the, uh, the quadrant, and then he could read the degrees precisely. And that would tell him his latitude. And with that, if he knew the latitude of where he left the port, he could return to the same port. As they say, uh, an explorer goes out into the field and can't find his way back. He's not a discoverer, he's just lost. <laughs> <laughs>